guys, this is my second video about MATLAB. Today we're going to see a little bit more about programming. So, I will separate in three parts. The first part, I'm going to show a little bit on this board uh, some simple stuff about programming, how the CPU understands what a program is. And the second part is going to be on the screen, showing in the MATLAB workspace, doing some simple programs, and I uh, hope you guys understand and enjoy it. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. So, what is a program? You can imagine a program as a recipe that is going to be interpreted by the CPU. It's really just a list of commands that the CPU will read to do something. Normally, what are the actions that the CPU will do? It's going to read from memory, write in memory. It's going to read or write in I.O. ports to connect to the external world, for instance, screen, keyboard, etc. And actually some math operations, like sum, subtraction, multiply, divide, etc. Normally, all computer languages have some kind of the same subset of, uh, of instructions. They have uh, instructions that verify some conditions, for instance, the if and the switch. You can, have, uh, you can test a condition, and if the condition is true, it's going to execute one action. If the condition is false, it's going to execute another action. It also has uh, iteration conditions, for instance. You're going to instruct the CPU to execute something while one condition is true, or you're going to execute one set of, uh, of actions for a number specific of iterations. Okay? Uh, we also have uh, instructions that we're going to break or is going to continue an interaction. We are going to show this with more detail and uh, on the programming board, okay? So guys, we're going to create here a simple function that are just going to sum two operators, two, uh, two arguments, sorry. So we're going to have a return value called in a variable called resp and we're going to have one part 1 and part 2 as arguments. Here we just create a simple comment that is something that will describe what your code or function is going to be doing. Now we just put on the output response variable the part 1 plus part 2. Then we just go to workspace and test this function. Well, another particular useful feature in MATLAB is that functions can return more than one value. So we're just going to create another function that we're going to calculate, I mean, more than once and return two different values, just to show you guys how to do it. So, we have two output variables, RESP1 and RESP2. RESP1, we, we sum part 1 and part 2, and RESP2, we subtract part 1 from part 2. Then, we switch to the workspace and show how to uh, call a function that returns two values. Well, if you use the command help and follow by the name of the function, the help will list uh, the top commands that you created inside your function. So, uh, a nice thing to have is every function that you start, every program that you start, you put some comments showing what the function actually do and maybe sometimes followed by an example. So, let's recapitulate. Uh, until now, you guys show how to create functions or program, which is a function is just a program that is going to return a value. And uh, more or less, we just show that a program can do some mathematical operation. You can write to memory. I mean, when you put a value into a variable, you're actually writing memory and, uh, and read as well. So now we're going to take a look a little bit in the in the instructions that are going to execute something or something else depending in, uh, on some kind of condition. The first one, the most important one, and is the if instruction that uh, is going to verify if a variable is equal, different, bigger or less than a value. And if this is true, it's going to execute something. 
If not, it's going to execute something else. Here, the function check val is going to verify if some number is bigger than 10 and it's going to display on the screen bigger than 10 or else it's going to say less than 10 or smaller than 10. Now, we create another if statement that is going to verify if the parameter some number is equal than 10 and display on the screen equal than 10. By the way, the function disp is going to communicate to the external world something that your program is doing. So this is the part that uh, when I previously showed you guys in the board is something that the computers do. They give information and they receive information from the external world. Just to finish the program, we're going to return a difference between uh, 10 and the argument passing some number. Okay. Uh, a function does not specifically need to return a value. If a function does not return a value, we call it procedure. We're going to see this also in the future. So, testing our function, we just pass, for instance, uh, some values. Let's say uh, 9. 9 is smaller than 10. We, then we pass something bigger than 10. And then we pass 10. You see? The program works as expected. No bugs till now. Now, let's imagine that you want to instruct the computer to repeat a instruction a specific number of times. For instance, let's say that we want to create a function that is going to look for a specific value in a vector. Just to remind, a vector is just a 1D matrix, it's just a continuous area of memory that you have some values there. By the way, uh, the way that we are sequentially looking for a value inside the memory maybe is not the most optimized way to do it. There are some other algorithms that, uh, that are specifically used to find values inside a, a big chunk of memory. So, we start just by getting the, the size of our input vector, okay? We use the function uh, numel, which is going to return the number of elements that a vector has, okay? This is going to be used in our for loop to specifically say, okay, do this uh, for every element in my input vector. So we can read this like this, for index variable going from one until number of elements, okay, execute something. And the action that the for loop will do is just something that is going to compare if the current element pointed in by any vector and your index variable is actually equal to a sum value, okay? If this value is true, he's going to return the, the, the index found. This is going, this actually is going to work as the position found, okay? And uh, if it does not found, he keep looking. Now let's test it. Imagine that we are creating now a vector, okay, with some values, uh, and we want, for instance, to know where the value 4 appear inside our vector.
Mm, and we have our first bug. So, what is wrong? Uh, we expect to found the value 4 in the fourth position in our vector. Why is actually returning 6? So, let's take a look. Well, our code is going to look for a value, okay? It's going to, for instance, look for the value 4 and it's going to continue. But it's not actually what we want. We want to break this iteration. After we found our value, we want to break, we want to stop, okay? Well, this kind of uh, malfunction in our program is one of the difficult parts in the life of every program. It's a bug, okay? It's just something that does not work as expected. Now, let's look to our problem of founding a value inside a vector in a different pers perspective. Okay, let's say that now we want to say to the computer that I want to keep looking for a value while this value has not been found yet. Okay, to do this we are going to use the instruction while. Okay. So basically, how can we read this? Basically, we want to say while value is not found, okay? Verify if the position of the vector is my value, okay? And if not, keep looking. And now let's test our function, okay? It works, but what about if we cannot find this value in our vector? What will happen if we keep looking? Okay, let's test. Well, we have an error. MATLAB is saying that we are trying to, us to access a position in our memory that has not been allocated, that does not exist. Okay, uh, in other languages we can call this buffer overflow. Okay, MATLAB does not actually allow a buffer overflow to occur. Every time that it detects that, uh, that you are trying to access out of your uh, vector boundary, it's going to return an error. So, what you're just going to add here is be something that is going to verify if uh, we are out of our vector boundary. Okay, uh, before we increment our counter our index count variable, we verify if this is not already bigger than the number of elements that we have in our vector. If it is, we break a rule. So, uh, now to finish the day, we're going to create another function that is going to use the switch instruction that is kind of like an if, but is going to verify uh, particular cases that a variable can assume. So here the function detect number does not have input arguments. We're going to get those values from the input variable that is going to prompt the user to type a number. Okay. And uh, we're going to use the switch instruction to map particular cases that the variable some num can have. And uh, we are going to execute something based on those particular cases. You can also do this with the if instruction, but the, in the end you're going to create a lot of if, else, if, else, and this can make your program become more difficult to read. 
In the case that you have a lot of particular cases that a variable can assume, you can use the switch instruction. So how can you read this? Uh, in the cases that some num can be value 1, we display num 1 detected. If we have the value 8, we say num 8 detected. Otherwise, we say number unknown. Now let's finish the video. Well, uh, this was the introduction about programming in MATLAB. The next video we're going to see a little bit more about uh, object-oriented programming. Okay? Ciao, ciao. See you in the next video. Bye, bye.